McCormick is giving investors a lot of flavor, growing first quarter sales by about 19 percent. The company acquired Reckitt Benkeiser's food business last year, which includes brands like French's and Frank's Red Hot Sauce. The stock, McCormick, up almost 7 percent just over the last year. And joining us right now is Lawrence Kurzius. He is chairman and CEO of McCormick. And Lawrence, thanks for being here today. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Let, let's talk about what happened with the, the acquisition of RB Foods. That was uh, something that the market looked at a little curiously. Stock was down, I think, 6% on the day of the announcement. But since then, you guys have announced a lot of progress, and it looks like your earnings were better than expected for the most recent quarter. How are things going? With right. That? Well, first of all, McCormick is a global flavor company, and so people think of us as spices and seasonings, but our business is actually much more broad than that. And this is a great flavor addition to our business. Uh, Frank's and French's were the key brands there, especially Frank's Red Hot. It's a fantastic brand with uh, millennials. This was a business that was trapped in a non-food company. And uh, now that it's found a home in a real food company, uh, we have a great opportunity to grow it in a way that the previous owner couldn't before. What There's do you some mean? Like we're well, getting into different yeah, lines. Yeah, different or? lines, but also expanding it internationally. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to uh, grow outside the U.S. We're huge internationally. Uh, most of our infrastructure actually is outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we have the opportunity to take this great brand that's number one in the U.S. and make it number one. What would I put it on? I haven't used it. You can put that stuff on everything. And like in fact, that's the that? advertising line that the company has used. Uh, you know, Frank's Red Hot, I put that bleep on everything. Like, what's the best <laughs> thing? I like the bleep part. What's yeah. the best thing? Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, you know, I like rice. it on eggs myself, but uh, but I'm a big hot sauce user Me and too. always have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. And, salsa, uh, right, and I find so. it goes on. I think it, it's a great flavor. You can really pour it on. It's delicious. It's not just heat. It's delicious flavor. Um, at Thanksgiving, I actually injected a turkey with it and deep fried it. It was fantastic. <laughs> no way. Uh, That's interesting. Lawrence, let's talk about what you said, though, about I think 41 percent of your sales being international sales at this point. And I think your fastest grower in that market is China. That, that helped a lot in the last quarter. What do you think about all this trade talk and tariffs talk? Does that concern you in terms of your right. business? Well, McCormick is a global company, and we have our brands in over 150 countries and territories in the world. So free and fair trade is very important to McCormick. Um, when it comes to the talk about tariffs specifically, um, you know, while China is an important market for us, we really don't export or import much to or from China either way. Um, it's, a, it's a large market for us, but we actually have manufacturing in China, and we make most of the products for the Chinese market in China. And our raw materials mostly come from within a few degrees of the equator. So you know, really? China's not a big source. Do you visit all those places? I do. Um, I take a personal interest and having a presence in all of the business units to get to know the management on the ground. Where are the places the you've been to, to and, uh, some of the spices? Oh my gosh. Like, that, we well, be, it's yeah. less about the, where the spices are grown and more about where we sell them and where the customers and what consumers are. Yeah. Uh, but uh, certainly China, India, most of the countries of Europe, uh, Poland. Do you, have a, do you need to have a partner in China? In China, we actually uh, don't. Uh, it used to be that you were required to have a, have a partner. Uh, we have two businesses that we own in China. One of them, the old one, still has a, a local partner, only 10%. The other one is wholly owned by us. Right. Let's talk about some of the flavor trends. I know you guys come out with the hot new flavor trends every year, and you just mentioned the hot sauce, sriracha, being right up at the top. But what other kind of trends are you seeing? We have this annual flavor forecast that we put out that, uh, that, we are, that the whole industry looks to us for. Uh, we have an unusual insight into the industry because half of our businesses are consumer brands. The other half is we actually do the flavor systems for most of the brands that you know in the store uh, for the other uh, manufacturers and for restaurants. So that gives us a lot of insight into flavors. And so we publish out uh, an, an annual forecast. Some of the big hits that we've had, you know, we uh, 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 talked about Chipotle before there was a restaurant by that name and when right. people didn't even know how to say Chipotle. Um, another trend was pumpkin pie spice. You know, McCormick has made pumpkin pie spice for decades. We recognize that it was really catching on and now you find pumpkin pie spice and things like everything, that. Yeah. exactly. And uh, most recently, um, hot and spicy has been a trend that we uh, called out and that really fits with our acquisition of Is price. it true, this is just a very random uh, personal question because my kids talk about this. Is it true that the reason why kids don't like spicy food or s certain types of tastes and that over time that we like spicier and spicier things is because our taste buds become uh, less and less um, 
They become powerful. Dull. We, they I become like dull. Is that true? Become like a lot of more things. Is that true? <laughs> more sophisticated. No, but I want. Is it true? Is a lot of things less effective. Yeah, there's Andrew, something to sort that. Of just but, sort of yeah, wear yeah. out. Yeah. I, yeah. There's I there's a little bit to that, but uh, but frankly, if you look at younger people today, there's more and more interest in spicy, flavorful foods from around the world. Uh, what um, age? That's a big driver there's, of our business. I, I think it's just you get grown up taste. Too, I think. Well, is it grown-up taste, or your, do you want to eat? Do you want to eat Indian dulled? or Chinese food that's not or Mexican food that's not spicy? I, yes, I, I like the. You do. The, I like the mild. Of I like it. Them. I love as, all those as, foods. As and much, I love don't mild. I know you do too? As much as you can handle. I like you? the. I like yeah. the spice. Why? And it's not for some. Well, and then my own, my other question that relates to this is different taste buds in different regions, right? They're, they're different parts of the world like different things. Is there, do you, what is a, that about? I think a lot of that is exposure and culture, actually, because there's nothing more central to, uh, to your culture and even to your, your family heritage and experiences uh, than the foods that you eat when you get together. And I think that those tastes that remind so you... Think you as as in the womb, whatever right. your mother's right. eating. And, and, you know, to this idea of spicy food not appealing to kids, you know, I'll, I'll use Franks as a, an example. The younger you are, the more likely you are to be a Franks user. Um, mm. yeah. What about texture, food texture? Ooh, well, you know, kids, I think, uh, go for different extremes on texture, but, you know, you're going to have to talk to somebody in the texture business. We're a flavor company. <laughs> Lawrence, I want to thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Again. This is great. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.